My name is Jake Blunt. I am a musician and scholar. I spend most of my time studying string band music from black and indigenous communities throughout the United States and studying old songs that I dig up places. The album explores the story of people who are descendants of refugees who have fled from the southeastern United States to New England in search of a more stable climate. Lord, I wonder will I ever get back home. They have been uh, hit by a lot of storms, have been subject to drought, they can't find food, they can't find shelter, and they are black and brown and hospitality is not shown to them, so they go on this northward road and face a number of trials on the road, eventually settle on this island, and their descendants have preserved the songs that those people carried up from the south with them. They have preserved the lessons that those people carried on the northward exodus and held them as a new religion, uh, the new faith, as it were, and wind up uh, recontextualizing these old songs that I didn't even really have to change the words for, to be about climate crisis and be about survival during that time, and to be about the lessons that your ancestors passed down to you. I think one thing I've always wanted to do with these old songs is to show that there's subtext beyond what is obvious, that it's not always just, it's a spiritual, so it's about Jesus. There's something else in there that they were trying to share, and that was the best way that they could do it. I think recontextualizing the songs like that without changing the words brings out those messages in a really neat way, even for those of us who have not lived that world uh, and hopefully will not have to. Lord, it must have been the devil that pulled me here. Lord, I'm all down and out. I think what was unique about this album was that I was going backward and forward at the same time and thinking all the way back to the beginning of our time in this country, to the place where, you know, black American culture really begins as a discrete thing, all the way to, in my brain, the end of the line after, you know, the climate crisis has done what it's done. We've been through everything we're going to go through. I think dealing with topics like climate change, dealing with the legacy of enslavement in the way that I am dealing with this repertoire, it felt like reaching back to this huge, horrible thing that I can't do anything about and reaching forward to another huge, horrible thing that I can't do anything about. And again, I feel connected to the things that we have been through and are going to go through during those times, but it's a lot to take into one body. The idea that these past experiences are biologically encoded into us and passed down, that we're starting to understand epigenetics and the fact that the things that our ancestors went through are still physically present on a molecular level in our body. Um, and thinking about that, thinking about inspirations that I had for this project, like Octavia Butler, who's one of the people this album is dedicated to, who wrote this incredible book, Kindred, about having to travel back and take that trauma onto your own body and learn to survive it when you don't think that you could 
absolutely there's a piece of that there. And that's part of what drew me to the music in the first place, was feeling like, I can't survive this. I need to learn from the people who did. And I think that racial and environmental struggles have always been really deeply intertwined, especially here on, you know, colonized soil in the Americas. And I think when you look at the legacy of colonialism across the world, you realize that the racist ideology that led people to come over here and just say, I can mow down everybody between me and the West Coast and take it because the church said I could, or because the king said I could, or because the president said I could. That's what set us up for wildfires eating all of California. It's what set us up for so much of the damage that's taken place. And even beyond that, once you get into the area where the settler colony is consolidated, where our power base is secure and we're not necessarily at war with indigenous peoples, even though the violence is still ongoing, you look at the places where we put people. Where are those indigenous communities presently confined to? Where are black people living? You look at who's living in Cancer Alley in Louisiana, who is suffering the cost, and you look at the forecasted damage that climate crisis, climate change is expected to do over the years, whose islands are sinking? Whose countries are going to disappear? Who will be displaced by wildfires, by desertification? Uh, there's so much coming, and in all these things, as in all the things in the past, the black and brown people of the world are going to bear the brunt of it.